John. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for inviting Michael and I into your home. Tonight. You're, yes. <laughs> you're going to give us a masterclass in bread making. Um, no, not quite that, but I'll tell you what I do. <laughs> well, in front of us, I can see you've got a fantastic array of different breads. Perhaps you'd like to explain yeah. what they are. Oh, the simple ones, first of all. Those are, are little rolls, bread rolls. You can do all sorts of shapes and mm. knotty ones. Um, we've eaten most of them because they were rather nice. Um, <laughs> that one, the big one, is what I call made of a milk loaf um, a concoction. I call it my dairy loaf because it contains milk, eggs, butter, um, and various other things. <laughs> um, so that's a special one that's glazed with egg yolk. So when it expands, you get this lovely colour scheme in it. So you never dilute your egg. With a bit of water or whisk your egg, just literally an egg yolk. That one is just egg yolk, yeah, with a, a drop of water just to make it go a bit further. Okay. That one is also um, glazed with egg, but not such a strong, not so much yolk, it's got a bit of white with it. Um, that's half the quantity of flour that that one has. That one is a five strand, so you've got five strands coming off, that is a three strand. So you do a bit of plaiting. Yes, that's right. You're plaiting mm. in. You can go seven strand, but I've never tried that. Gosh. Um, and that's your standard white split tin loaf, uh, which I make. Um, in fact, I don't make ordinary loaves very often. <laughs> I make things up. In fact, when I was making it for the family, we would have it on a Sunday afternoon. I'd put it on the table and the children would say, what's in it? Um, yes, right. Um, flour and water yeast, etc. Yes, but what about other things? Why well, I try to remember? It could be soya flour, could be herbs, could be anything. This one, of course, is my harvest sheaf, which I've been making for the church since 2013. Um, it's not really baking, it's more artistic. I put that on a board, build it up, and you have those strands there. And these are all little bits of, of dough which you clip with, with scissors and you start from the outside and you gradually work in. And then Anne does the mice. And can I just ask something, John? Is that like a salt dough? Yes. It's right, so it's not the same sort of dough that you no. would eat? It's the same ingredients, but far more salt. The salt content on here is far higher than you would use on there. Okay. And in fact, you don't treat it like bread at all. It's never baked. It's and how long have you had this one? Have you kept it? Oh, this is the last one I did. Actually, Which was when? Oh, last... When was it? October. The harvest? Yeah, last harvest. Uh, is it, so yeah. they keep and keep? No, they um. don't. I wouldn't drop it. It'll go, Choom! it will disintegrate. This is the first one I've made where it hasn't cracked on this side. I won't sorry, show you the other side. Because they do, they do dry and they crack after a while. You can't keep them. This one's kept longer than any other one I've had. So, you were saying something about the little mice. Well, that one makes the mice. Wonderful. She says they're fat ones this year. <laughs> well, that's very well. Um, so moving on, um, yeah. just very uh, briefly tell us what you're going to be making I'll today. Go upstairs and get some white dough made with, this white, made with white flour. So I'll go and get it now. So John, you're going to show us now exactly how to put uh, the dough ingredients together. Can you talk us through what you're using? Yeah, well, this is white flour. I'm using Allinson's. It's a good idea to pick a make and stick to it because otherwise they tend to vary. Uh, now I'm just getting up to the you know, quantity I want. And would you use a supermarket own brand bread flour? I have done, but I don't like it because it tends to vary. Whereas the um, more expensive commercial brands. Um, tend to be more consistent. So that's the flour, that's the only thing I need to measure uh, at the moment. I'm going to put in um, two teaspoonfuls of salt, and the salt controls the yeast rising. If you don't put salt in, then it goes um, up like a balloon, <laughs> just keeps rising and then collapse. Oh. So that's two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of Rapid recovery yeast, or whatever they call it. Oh, um, do, what do they call it? Do they call it um, fast? Easy bake. 
Easy bake. Easy bake yeast. So oh, this well. is a fast action. Fast fried action yeast. yeast, yes, that's right. So that's those ingredients. We want some oil or water in there. Um, let's use that one. Uh, well, as much as you feel like. <laughs> You're so experienced. <laughs> You're so experienced that you know exactly how much to put in. But on the recipe, you'll tell us well, how it, much. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't matter because uh, now I've lost my um, my dough hook. Oh, it's in there. There we go. It's clean. Yep. Um, now it doesn't matter as long as you get the consistency right, within reason. So John, if the consistency isn't right, can you willy-nilly add a bit more liquid or a bit more flour? Yes. Right. Yes. Do it fairly frequently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there we go. That's got the oil in there. I'll put some water in. Warm water. Finger warm. And then I'll start to mix it. Yes, you add, I add the water gradually. You don't put a lot in at once, you want it to mix and then see how the consistency is going. like in the bowl. I can get a hold of it and you can see how elastic it is. Yeah. It's sticking to my hands a little bit but that can go now into the airing cupboard, cupboard and let it rise. And John can I just ask how long did that process of kneading take in the machine? Uh, that's probably best part of 10 minutes. You've got to mix it first of all then knead it for a minute on number one, and then four minutes on setting two. Okay, so now Here we go. you're going to go to the airing cupboard yeah. and take your baby. And John, if you don't have a dough hook, can you still make bread? Yes, but you can't do it on the machine. The yeah. dough, hook, dough hook is strictly for the machine. Yeah, and you'll do it by hand. Do it by hand, yeah, work it. Yeah. Okay, okay. so we'll Go see. On. How long have you got to prove this? Oh, probably about 40, 45 minutes. Okay. So, John, you've just been to collect your bowl of dough from your warm airing cupboard right. upstairs where it's been proving. How long did it take to prove? Uh, about uh, 40 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And so now you're moving on to the next stage and you're, I gather you're going to be making this batch of dough into a cottage loaf? That's right. That's okay. Right. So you show yeah. us what you're doing Sweet. next. Yep. Well, there's the dough. We've done it just a little bit, so uh, now we'll turn it on. Matt, there we go. And how long do you have to do that for? One minute. One minute? Yeah. One minute on number one. Okay. And so the cottage loaf, um, you're going to make two rounds, a bigger yeah. one and a small one. That's right. Yeah. And I'll cut the dough with one of these. That is what you use for cutting the dough. You want to scratch the surface. And where do you get those from, John? I got that from online bakery bits, I think it was. Oh man. There we are. Bakery bits. An invaluable piece of kit. Sorry? An invaluable piece of kit. Yes. <laughs> but not very expensive. <laughs> right, that will do. And John, do you, is your dough sometimes really sticky 
or are you such a master at your craft now that it's always <laughs> the right? The critical time is when you're doing the initial mix. Then you decide, do you want a soft sticky, sticky dough or do you want one a bit like this that you can handle it without it sticking to you and not dripping all over the place. And, and that comes with experience. Right. Scales. So you're going to weigh that piece of dough then? That's right. Yeah. About a third. Don't really need to weigh it, but I tend to. So you, if you look as if you're, you're not having to put lots of elbow grease into that. I don't believe in doing that unless I have to. <laughs> yeah. Is that because the machine has done all the work? Yes. Right. Yeah. We're really just shaping it up, or I do. Put that on a prepared tray which is oiled and floured. Well on top. So you don't have to stick that on with anything. No, you do that. Two fingers in. Yep. Ooh. Together. That looks absolutely fabulous. Then we put it into an oiled up polythene bag. Unfortunately this one's not quite big enough so I've got to use two. And why do you have to prove it inside a bag, John? Because otherwise the dough would stick to the bag. And if you didn't put cover it, it would get a dry skin on the surface. So, just to keep the air out. And where are you going to put that now? Back in the airing cover. And for how long? 35 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so here's your cottage loaf. You brought it down from the airing cupboard, John, yeah. and it's proved. And that took, I think, less than thirty minutes. No, I think. Well, I think it was probably thirty, thirty-five okay. minutes. That's what it would be normally. But I, I didn't time it effectively. But what I'll do now is put some. Uh, I don't want to glaze this because of the type of loaf it is. But sprinkle some flour on it because that seems to be traditionally what bakers do. And just leave it like that, and we'll pop it in the oven. I use a gas oven that's marked 6, 200 degrees centigrade, 400 degrees Fahrenheit for other people. That will go in there, shut the door, and that will take 35 minutes. Right John, we now come to the interesting part. The cottage loaf has been in the oven for how long, John? 35 minutes. 35 minutes, and now you're going to bring it out. So let's, wow, that's looking good. Ooh, are you pleased with that, John? Yes. That looks all right. excellent, excellent. Now, you don't glaze that, do you? No, no. No, it's a cottage loaf, and if you were going to glaze the bread, would you glaze it before you oh, put yes. it in the oven? Yes, you glaze it before you put it in the oven. Um, glazes are, can be, as we've uh, spoken about, egg yolk. You can use water and, and sprinkle something on it. You can put poppy seeds on it, all sorts of things. Lovely. So that's been in the oven for about 35 minutes, mm. gas mark six. Yeah. And um, ready to eat now, do you think, John? No, you don't. Oh. You get indigestion if you eat it too quickly. <laughs> How long do you leave it before oh, you cut well, into it? Does it matter? Two hours, let it cool right. down. John, tell us please how you got into bread making in the first place. Well, that was an interesting story. In 1978, there was a baker's strike threatened, and in fact, it came off. Uh, when I heard it announced over the radio, I was driving from Cambridge to Peterborough. And uh, I heard this and I thought, well, I don't know, there's plenty of flour around, so we need a, something to make bread. I know, I'll get a, an, a mixer, a Kenwood mixer. So I stopped off at Bar Hill, the, the shop, big shop there, and came home with a Kenwood chef. To which Anne said, I can't make bread. I said, well, have a go. And it was perfectly right. She couldn't <laughs> make bread. It came out like a brick. And I thought, 
no, no, this is silly. So I started making bread and it, uh, I, it went on from there and I used to make all the family's bread for years. And uh, I used to make perhaps two or three batches in one go. And uh, by the time I put a fresh loaf on the table on Sunday afternoon, it was gone by Sunday evening. Um, they just seemed to like it. And you can mix all sorts of things in bread. Um, it's quite interesting. You have savoury loaves, you can have sweet loaves. And it's just fun. Yeah. But, and, uh, and John, are you still making bread now? Uh, yes, I do make it. There was a long time when I didn't make it. But I got, a couple of years ago, I got fed up with going around the supermarkets and trying to find a loaf I liked. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll start again. So I did. And uh, yeah, I, I usually make a loaf just in, just in more than one, sorry, less than a week. So mm -hmm. I've had more than one loaf a week. And what is your favourite bread? What do you what do you make? Oh, well, it's the one I call a farm yeah, a loaf, and that's uh, a mixture of wholemeal flour, white flour, uh, oil that's uh, cooking oil, and um, I think that's all. But yes, that's that's right. Yeah, and porridge. That's what porridge oats. Super. Well, thank you, John, for spreading and sharing your expertise with us. <laughs>